So today we're going to look at the meaning of the equal sign and we're going to look at an inequality sign, so when it is not equal and how we represent that. And then that's going to lead us into some questions where we have to think how many answers are there for these questions uh, and also to think systematically about giving a few different clues where we start. So hopefully all of that will make sense and just like normal we're going to kick off with a little recap from, uh, from the extend task yesterday. So we start again today looking back at the extend task um, from yesterday um, and I want to see if we can look at an efficient strategy here. So you were asked design a sequence that matches these rules. The first term in your sequence must be between 50 and 60. To find the next term in your sequence each time the same number is subtracted and minus 11 is the third negative number in this sequence. Write the first three terms of the sequence. Now what I wouldn't do is start with a number between 50 and 60 and then kind of do trial and error and count backwards. I would actually start with, with the minus 11 and think what must the steps be? So if the third negative number is minus 11, I'd have to think what could we be going up in steps of or, or down in steps of to get there if you like. So I'm, I'm working backwards. Now let's say it was, it was, I was going down in steps of three um, then of course the number, the second negative number we would be saying would be minus eight, and then it would have to the number before in that sequence would be minus five, and then it would be uh, minus two, and then we'd have our first positive number which would be one. Now actually, because this doesn't work, and why not? Because there in this sequence there's four negative numbers, so actually I know the jumps must be um, the 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 amount that I'm subtracting must be more than three for that to be possible. So I'm going to try another another alternative that ends in minus 11. This time, uh, going down in steps of 4, we'd go minus 7 to minus 11. And then it would be, uh, before that in that sequence, it would be minus 3. And then before that, it would be 1. So we'd be going 1, negative 3, negative 7, 7, negative 11. So those steps will work. Now we'll come in a moment to how far up we'll have to go. So the first three terms are between... 50 and 60. But let's see all the ways that this can be done. So that was going down in steps of four. Let's try going down in steps of when, we, when we're falling in steps of five. So it would be minus six and then minus one and four. Yep, so, so that one's going to work as well. And what about jumps of six? Well, minus 11 so that would have to be minus 5, and then actually we'd, we'd have a 1. 1 minus 5 minus 11 is going down in steps of 6, but actually that makes minus 11 the second negative number in the sequence. So, so the amount that we're subtracting must be either 4 or 5. Um, so what I would think about here is, well, let's see how we can get a number between 50 and 60 in, in this sequence. Um, so it might be that what we do, for example, is we know, well, I know that 41 will have to be in the sequence and there I've got, um, I've got 10 more lots of uh, 4 that I've added on. Um, and so maybe to find another one in the sequence, let, let's say I could add in another, let, let's say we add in another 4 lots of 4. Um, so that is 16. So that would be, um, let's say, 57. So if we add a, a 57, then the first term in your sequence is between 50 and 60. So there's an example it could be. So the sequence could go 57, 53, 49, say. Um, or equally, the sequence could start with, with 53. W what about here? Well, if 4 is in the sequence, if I add 10 lots of 5, 10 jumps of 5 in this sequence, that would get me up to 54. Okay, so um, it could be, let's say, for example, we could go for 59, 54, 49, and then eventually in that sequence, the third negative number will be minus 11. So the main focus on today's video is actually um, more than, less than, and equals, and, and looking at number sentences and looking at using the, uh, the signs for that as well. And that will lead into the problem-solving task that we're doing. So we'll practice that skill in that problem-solving task. So we first build the understanding and then we're going to kind of deepen in that way. Um, so if you have a look at this image, this image shows and can be described by the number sentence 3 plus 2 equals 4 plus 1. Because they're the same, 3 plus 2 and 4 plus 1 there are both equal to 5. Um, whereas uh, this example here, I could write this as a number sentence as 3 plus 3 is less than 8. 8 is more than 3 plus 3 because we can see that it, that it indeed is. 
Um, so have a look at this example here. So which answer? 23 plus 16 equals what number subtracts 6? Um, so what's the missing number? Now, you might be able to find the answer, but also, could you explain the mistakes um, for the other incorrect possible answers? Pause the video and have a go at that. Okay, and then when you're ready, let's have a look. So 23 plus 16, so this side here is 39. So I've got to think for this side here, which number subtract 6 is 39? And it is actually 45. So 45 subtract 6 makes this side 39. 23 plus 16 is 39. Um, so that's the correct answer. Now, what about these mistakes? Well, the first one is I could just ignore this minus 6 and think, well, I'm just going to do 23 plus 16 is 39 and put the 39 in here. So that's the mistake there. Well, the mistake here is uh, equally is, is very understandable. I could just think I'll do 39, 23 add 16 is 39, and then subtract the 6 is 33. But it doesn't make both sides the same. Um, if I had 33 subtract 6, then this side would be much less than this side here. At the moment, they are equal, so I've got the right sign there. Now, here's another challenge for you. Um, but And this is one of my favourites, I have to say. I, I often say that, but I do really love this one. Um, so the missing number is a positive whole number in here. Okay, and, and this side is more than this side here, because we can see that from this, uh, this greater than, less than sign that we have here. Um, so these sides, are, they're definitely not the same. Uh, can you find an answer? Can you find different answers? Could you work out how many answers there are? Uh, pause the video and have a go. And then when you're ready, let's have a look. So it could be 24 divided by 1, because that would be 24 on, on this side here, and that's definitely more than 4. 24 divided by 2, that's 12, that's more than 4. 24 divided by 3 is more than 4, it's 8. 24 divided by 4 is as well. Now 24 divided by 5 is also, uh, because how many 5s in 24? There's 4 and 4 fifths. Um, it can't be 24 divided by 6 though because that would equal 2, 4, and so then this would be the wrong sign. So how many answers? Five possible answers that we can have there. Um, now, have a look at these examples here. Um, and for these examples, we want to have a look at, is it possible that there is more than one answer, or is there only one answer? And let's have a look for these examples. Um, so the first one, there's only one answer. It has to be 21. Uh, 21 subtract 15 equals 6. And there's only one answer here. We've got an equal sign, so it must be only one uh, po possibility here. And only one missing value, so it's got to be 21. Now, if we have a look at the example here, the green one, um, it could be 15 subtract 1 equals 6 plus 8, because then it makes both sides 14. So that's one possible answer there. Um, but it could also be 15 subtract 2 equals 6 plus 7. It could also be 13. So here, because we've got these two different um, missing numbers, there are different combinations the answer could be. Now, in the example here, um, there are actually lots of different answers as well. So it could be 6 times 2, that's 12, equals 10 plus 2. And it could be 6 times 3 equals 10 plus 8. And notice here, every time I will multiply by uh, another number, I'll have another lot of 6, I can just add 6. So in the red example, I've got an infinite number of answers. Whereas actually, if I think about this green one, there'll be a limit to the number of answers I can have. Um, because when I keep subtracting more, um, eventually, I'll get to a point where I um, I won't be able to, I've got to minimise the answer. The answer will have to be less than 15. So the green example, a limited number of answers, but different answers, the red example, an infinite number. So this is the main task we're going to have a go at today. And what you're going to be asked to do is fill in the boxes using each of these numbers once. And you need to do so, so that all three number sentences are correct. Um, now, here, here are some mistakes, um, and what I want you to do is to have a look at those different mistakes and work out what mistakes been made, which lines are incorrect. Um, so uh, pause the video and have a look at those mistakes.
Okay, and let's have a look. So 10 subtract 8 is 2. Um, 8 subtract 7 is 1. So actually there's a mistake here because 1 is less than 2. Um, and here we've got 20 is more than 4 times 3. So that part was, was correct. And here I've got 5 plus 4 is 9. 15 subtract 6 is 9. So that part is correct. So we've got a mistake there on the, on the top line here. And then let's have a look at how this has also been done incorrectly. So 10 subtract 8 is 2, as we said before. 8 subtract 4 is 4, so that part's correct there. And on this part here, we've got 6 times 3 equals 18, and 18 is less than 20. So yeah, that's, that's good there. Um, and then we've got 6 plus 4 equals 15 subtract 5. So yeah, that, that looks good. Um, but what mistake's been made there? Well, actually, you could only use each digit once. But look here, we've got six used twice. We didn't manage in this example to use the seven. So that's the mistake that's been made in mistake two. Right, now it's time for your go at this task. So you can see it's complex. You've got to use each of those digits once. Um, pause the video and get right stuck into your task. So let's have a look at the thought process that lies behind positioning those numbers without it just being a kind of trial and error until we find an answer. Um, the first thing I would think is, is look at, there's some numbers that can only go in certain places. There's some that can go in lots of places, but there's some that can only go in some places. One of them is the eight. I'd often look at either the smallest or the largest number. So where could the eight go here? Could be a question that I, that I could ask. Um, so, for example, the 8 can't go in this middle line here. It is not possible for it, for it to go there. And actually, that is the only place that the 8 can go. Um, because if I put the 8 here, uh, eight, 8 plus 4 is, uh, is 12, and then I haven't got a 3 to subtract, um, and then um, 15 subtract 8 is, uh, is 7, um, and then I haven't got a 3 to add to this side. So actually, this is the only place that the 8 can go. And it can't go here because this side has to be more. So it's got to be there. Um, now, similarly, I could look now at where is the only place that the 7 can go. Um, now, if this is 2. I can't put it here um, because 8 subtract 7, um, that, that would make this side 1. So the 7 can't go there. Uh, the 7 also can't go there. Now the seven could actually go at either place in the bottom box it could, because it could be seven plus four is the same as 15 subtract four, They're, but both sides are 11. And it could actually go the other way around as well. Um, so it could be 15 subtract seven is the same as four plus four. Um, now the six actually then must go in the middle line space um, because um, then we've got the five that can go in this top box here. So that's the combination that then works um, so that the top number sentence is now correct. I couldn't position the six here because eight plus six equals to two, then that one wouldn't be correct. Uh, so there we go, that uncovers solution one. And solution two, uh, there we go, that's with the seven and the four, the other way around. If you've got room for some more thinking, here's your task, click on the blue link underneath the video to find it. So for this extend task, where again, we're only using positive whole numbers, and you need to order the number sentences by the number of possible answers from the fewest to the most. So for each number sentence, work out how many possible answers are there uh, and then order them from the, um, from the number sentence with the fewest possible answers to the number sentence with the most. Uh, good luck with that. Answers at the bottom. Uh, I'm going to be back again tomorrow. Looking forward to it.